Okay, ready? Mm-hmm. We are in the new age of crystals and shit bombs. You have been warned. Content is explicit. Oh my, Kathy, I love your crystal. Is that terrible? Or- oh, I love it. <laughs> I couldn't tell if I was like, is that a good cast disclaimer or not? No, I loved it. Okay. Sorry, bitches. I'm paranoid. Welcome. You are listening to Bewitch Banter with two high best friends. She, penoid and skeptical, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, we are on good vibes here. We are on the universe talking about, well, I don't know, actually, this episode... I'm telling everyone, come into it with an open mind. (laughs) (laughs) Um, This this episode on NPR, The View, Political Talk Radio. (laughs) Which Amy confessed she wished she would be. Yeah, I'm trying to be. I'm a wannabe. I want to be on The View. So, so this is my audition. (laughs) You know what's funny? This this explains your classiness and my ratchetness. So, you want to be on The View. I wanted to be on The Real. What's the real? He's like the hood version of the view. Oh, I probably like that on better. the WC or some shit or CW. <laughs> but back east, there was a nail place, and me and my mom would always go like midday, and that would always be on in the nail place. And I'd be like, "This is so good." I'm sure I'd probably be the same though. Any anyone who's willing to listen to me, I will be on that platform. That's why I'm on celebrity list celebrity bewitch banter, bewitch banter. <laughs> <laughs> y'all don't know but fuck you bum, 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 bum. yeah you don't know then you you don't know you I do not okay so what am i talking about today damn sounds like a basic karen becky question. i don't know i'm undecided on this one uh but it's gonna be a political episode so that's why i was hinting mm. at wanting to be on the view actually i would not want to because i'd be terrified all the time because i well, would you, not your ass will be canceled so fucking quick <laughs> i know i just say one line i'd be like oh shit gotta go <laughs> yes i would because you're british and y'all speak your mind way too much america we you know no but it just takes one lawsuit it would just that's what all of it take and then i would learn to rope it in i think if they keep you if you're that big of talent oh. enough to be like so Joy pain? Behar, she's 80 and she's been fired four times on the show because she said stuff, but they have to like fire her probably as a publicity stunt. No, they have to legally fire her because. Yeah, but then like, they hire her back right away, which I think is kind of badass. They're like, fuck, we have to do this. But like, it'd be kind of cool to have a job where they're like, fuck, uh, we got to fire you. mean own you. a media corporation? Sure would. <laughs> sure fucking <laughs> no, would. No, but I feel like to be on that level, be like, oh, I got fired, but they keep asking me back. Have you ever watched Secession? Mm-mm. It's so good. It's about a media empire family. Okay. Anyway. So I would probably it. love it. You would. It's good. Oh, so anyway. we get to the we're fucking subjects. Empire. People are like, these bitches are dumb. Just hang in there. We get a little bit dumber. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. So we all know that you only have to have, like, I think it's kind of crazy that America is very strict in ways and in other ways we're not. Like, mm-hmm. you want a gun? Get one. You want to be the president and you're 35 and you were born in this country? Fucking go for it. Because I feel like there's some people who need a fucking sanity check. Like, hey, um, you're a little whack job. Should we take your IQ test or just see? My IQ is perfect. Perfect. Or I feel like you should do an extensive background check. Like the fact that Trump went and released his tax records, I feel like that has to be. They need to pass it into law that that has to be mandatory. But now. But I feel like now it's scary because he did got away with all this stuff and it's because like there's certain laws that only apply to presidents and that's what scares me. But okay, mm-hmm. I'm terrified shaking my little Ooh. fucking boots. And so now we have a new opponent to Biden. Her name is Marianne Williamson and she's known as the crystal worshiping anti-vaccine new age weirdo who would make <laughs> me talk him, who likes to talk about the... Love the center of her platform. Okay, let's hear it because she always seen shit because I haven't heard shit or seen or read shit about her in my world. So, and she thinks it's the new time for a new age politics. She's Oprah's guru, spiritual advisor, and has written countless self help oh, books. Oprah again with the. Mm. And she just announced on March 4th that she'd be running as a progressive candidate as a president nominee against Joe Biden to be the Democratic front runner. 
if her name sounds familiar to you, which it didn't sound familiar to me at all, but she was actually on the first debate stage in uh, 2020. No, that and she immediately uh, she was kind of like a viral tweet where people just like it went uh, like viral making fun of her. Okay, like a gif, like a or yeah, a and yeah. I, I probably for obviously like politically leaning nerds, like obviously people like us were not that politically nerdy. No, well, I am kind of now these days. I don't know why I've been keeping up with it, but so the people were like making fun of her and. She ran out. She like didn't run after that. She only has, I think, four percent support. Oh, yeah, so she couldn't even get into the like big race. Yeah, but okay. With me saying all this shit, I thought I set my intentions out for this episode to totally shit on her because I thought it'd be funny. Like we could be like Mean Girls. Which, yeah. Because no, because you thought I was like her. So fuck that. Let's see what you got to say first. No. <laughs> no. Not like her. Let me. I don't know how to explain it. Let's just get into okay. it. And it wasn't a diss what I said. I'm, I'm eyeing you like, mm-hmm. What does I'm not, to say about me? I'm not dissing you. It's in the most loving way me saying that. Let's hear it. But I was ready to di- shit on her the whole time. And then more research I did, it actually sent me on a mind fucking trip because... I still don't know how I feel about her, and it's because it shows, for example, how opinionated articles are. Because mm-hmm. usually I go in into searching a politician when I already know who they are. Sure. So I already have my mind made up. I think Trump bad, so I'm going to read every sure. article that confirms that. Biden, halfway decent, not terrible. You know how all that happens, right? No, I know why. Yes, 100%. All the platform serving what you like no but to experience it firsthand not knowing Mm -hmm. and then it made me really have this path of where i don't know where to what to believe that makes me happy that's what i try to teach my students like i literally i'm like having a teacher gasm right now like this is what i try to teach yay (laughs) no but i feel like i honestly had it because i went from it in a mindset of not knowing zero to fuck i only i didn't even know her name because i heard on the view them talking about her so i was like i have to google it and it was just interesting because I had no preconceived notion. And it shows you how inclined we are to read articles that back up what we believe in. Bias. And I know this seems like totally crazy, but to experience it firsthand, I was oh, like, fuck. Oh, no, it doesn't seem crazy. I, I'm just so happy that, like, you experienced that. Like, I'm sorry it is a mind fuck because it is. But, like, how beautiful is it now that you know to look for that shit? because i went in wanting to hate her and then now i don't know how i feel there are a lot of questionable things she's done and there are like things i'm like "Ooh, i fucking hate you but then there's things i'm like "Ooh, you're great and you have to remember politicians are never like we're not dating them we're just trying to figure out who has the best of whatever Mm -hmm. fucking little nimble of a brain they have as politicians because they Mm -hmm. are all evil Yes, yes, yes. And I think it'd be weird that you think of all people that I would like a spiritual person. That's where I think my this whole episode, you'd be like, what? I am. I am already like what? But I think a lot of my pre bias on her or like a bi- like my what's the word I'm looking for? Maybe biases. Sound, huh? Biases. Mm-hmm. Thanks for making me sound half intelligent. Uh, <laughs> Got you. Ding. <laughs> Big words? What are those? But I think a, a big portion of it is that I I lean to the side of thinking that spiritual leaders are crooks and and scam artists. Sure. And I'm on the side of politicians or all that. Which, well, check, check, check. Politicians, check. fact, yes. But we all know about, it's a general thing, but I think spiritual gurus yeah, they're, they're have money a, high, a deeper emotional impact on people than politicians do. Yes, yeah. politicians impact our everyday li- lives with what they decide on and that impacts our community, but we outwardly don't know, yeah. oh, blah, 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 pass this law, where Super a spiritual true. guru would impact you emotionally and yes. tell you, like, get divorced from blah, blah, blah. Yeah, wow. So that's why I think it's a Damn, darker... Yeah, she went deep on this one i'm so fucking proud right now what i just think it's a darker force to fuck with people mentally than it is but then politically it's fucked up too but i guess there's two wrongs doesn't make one right but one like seeing someone face to face fuck who knows they're all evil anyway right they okay. are I, I went on, on a that. long rant but i'm wanting you to be open-minded when you listen to this episode and i hope it makes other people research it more because i think for me i'm still undecided and maybe at the end of this episode i'll have a decision but it really opened my mind like about how we're so susceptible to hear one soundbite and not really question it, but that's what we do. We're busy lives. We don't have time to think. 
So I actually agree with a lot of her positions on different policies, but also we're going to cover why other people, her haters, and like this is why I'm torn, are so cynical about her running. And a few times she's definitely has said some stupid things, but I watched her on, um, she went on Trevor Noah's show. Okay. And the one thing I really admired about her was she said something and she outwardly right said, and this is never a politician does this, didn't blink with an eye. She goes, yeah, that was really stupid. I don't know why I said it that way. I didn't mean it. And, I, and she's like, I'm sorry. I want to tell everyone I'm sorry. And I was like, whoa, when have we heard a politician say, yeah, that was dumb. I said that instead of spin it and say they meant something else. That's I would love to see that clip. I'm fascinated by that. So that to me was like big because it's like how refreshing to hear a politician say sorry. So that part well, yeah, of me, and authentically, like you said, like that. And not say it, twi- I hate when they're always like, or they don't answer the question. They answer it a different way. And I'm like, no, they asked you this bitch answer mm-hmm. it. So that to me it was like it was interesting, and I do think she is. Oh, God, I don't know how I feel about her, but I, a little background on her. So she first came on the scene when she published her first book. It's called A Return to Love, and it was part of Oprah Winfrey's book club, and she was on Oprah's show. So that's really where she gets her debut of fame. she an oracle? What do you mean? Like, I feel like our medium? No. Okay, never mind. They're- Oprah had a lot of people... Never mind. So remember Alison Dubois, episode number one? Yeah. High coverage. She had a book that was called something almost just like that, but like, but returning to your dead love. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I can see that. Anyway. So that was like, but I think it's an Alison Dubois book. So she's currently writing a new book about miracles and is preparing to write a book about Jesus. Are uh, we still talking about Jesus? <laughs> Are we still talking about Jesus? Oh my god! I just took a sip of this and I was like, "It tastes even better." It really does. You, I A's like, like a fucking A chef. B, what do you call it? Cu- what is the cocktail? mixologist? Thank you. <laughs> I was like, cu- no, it's like perfect balance of orange chocolate espresso, cream espresso, cinnamon. Pumpkin, I'm getting off to my own goods. rose petals. <laughs> Honey, I, I should always, put some honey on there. I always tell Corey this shit. I go, honey, you realize you're fucking spoiled, right? Because I make. Him, I don't think he really realizes. I don't think so either, because he. I think he expects this quality at a restaurant, knowing like, and like, if he doesn't get it, you know, he's not gonna be any, like say anything because he's too nice. But he's gonna be like, and he said this sucks, <laughs> but he won't say anything because he's too fucking nice. Oh yeah. But I feel like I tell Corey all the time he's spoiled. It's like, I make you fucking nice food, bitch. I, I'm a He said about people at his last job were all, they were asking him if they could pay me and I would make them all you a lunch. You should have. That's your side hustle. I know, but. Straight up, girl. No, it's not. But imagine dealing with everyone's bitchy ass. Oh, I don't like tomatoes. I don't like onions. I don't like cilantro. If, if it, they pay you enough, who gives a fuck what they like at all? They weren't like. going to pay me enough to warrant and i was like i don't want to deal with you charge enough you know what i'm saying it's about that charging your worth but i would want to karen's little bitchy ass being like i don't like onions i want my money back i'd be like bitch you gotta know what i mean here's the contract this is this and no fuck you unless it makes you ill or sick that's why i would not have a food service because i'd be saying fuck you right (laughs) so we got back to bottom line (laughs) i mean Fuck is it. this what we're gonna have like if we have fan be a spinner's bro no. i love it if like you're gonna be the pr person and you're like fuck you yeah. and later i'm like so how did it go krista how do you talk him off the ledge you're like well the cops are coming <laughs> i just told them to go fuck themselves no big deal <laughs> it's like they're fucking brought up their ass okay what well actually officer okay i'm gonna arrange back. a deal with you i'm gonna get back to it okay so I'm going to circle back to what I was saying. So she's currently writing a new book about miracles mm-hmm. and is preparing to write a book about Jesus. Okay, so the funny thing is she's Jewish, which I don't know if that's funny because oh. do Jew- Jewish people believe in Jesus? So let me clarify for you. They acknowledge he existed. So Catholics and Jews share the same first book of the Bible. Okay, is, I'm impressed you know this. Which is the Old Testament. We share that. So the Old Testament, which is the Bible verse Bible. You don't have to get that far in the nitty gritty. Anyway, this is the same book. Because it's all fake. Once Jesus, <laughs> hey, it's coming up. I'm going to cover if Jesus was real or not, y'all. I've, uh, I've always Easter, been questioning that. Wink, wink, covering it. Gosh, y'all. 
with sexy Jesus real is the real question. On um, Chris doesn't mind, but no. Um, anyway, probably looks like a fucking Morphean alien. We <laughs> got into so Jews and Christians share the Old Testament, New Testament. Only Catholics believed in because they believed that Jesus was our born born again, will rise again and come. Jews don't believe that. They don't believe in heaven. They don't believe in hell. They don't believe in Jesus as the prophet. Moses is their prophet. I do know this because so there you go. Corey's told me this before, but it's all coming back to me now. Did okay. I, did I do it justice? Yes. A historical perspective. Well, you're asking me like I'm the expert, so you get an A plus. A plus plus because yes. I don't know anything. Chance. Ding, ding. Okay. So, so she's Jewish, but she's reported to say when you born a Jew, you die as a Jew. Yeah, that makes sense. She sees her spiritual beliefs as uh, more of a mishmash of Christianity and changes with life, and it's been uh, refined for decades. So she's on a spiritual path. Like, okay. she's like, don't hold me. And I think that's kind of true, though. Like, what? don't hold me to what I say when I'm 20, when I'm 40, or oh, 60 I or 70. And that's what she's saying is a little bit like, she's on. And I could understand why it'd be really annoying if people, not standing up for this bitch, but in general, like you said something 30 years ago and people bring it up every time you're like, I've evolved as a person. Let's move the conversation yes. on. Yep. Like you're allowed to believe things and evolve. And I think the media does a really bad job penalizing people for a lifetime for saying one dumb thing. It's like, okay, people are allowed to learn and observe. I That's why I hate cancel culture. I'm so, you guys again teacher orgasm right now I'm sorry what's happening I have my first graduate of understanding everything I've been talking about I'm being a commander for like two years so did I get a diploma oh my god you graduated I'm literally I need I need a you didn't think of I thought this the whole time oh my god I are you crying I am why oh my god you like get it you got it you got it you got it Oh my god. Okay. So did I go to grad school without going to grad school? You got your PH motherfucking D. Ah, look at me again getting degrees on the fly. Oh my god. <laughs> you got your PH. Okay, a professor is crying over me. Oh I am so I proud. Am. Oh my god, I am proud of myself. I am too. Okay, so fuck. I'm smart, bitches. <laughs> You are. You're very smart. You're incredibly <laughs> smart. And don't ever let anyone tell you you're not because we're artsy people. Okay, well, back to the topic. Let's do it. Um, okay, so her first attempt running, she was mostly laughed at and wasn't taken seriously at all. And you said, sorry, this was 2020 again? Yes. Okay. Do you remember her? No. Not at all. That's why I was like, who? Which is really interesting because she was on the first debate stage and they, she, they said out, out of 49 out of 50 states, she was the most Googled thing that uh, happened that night. Damn. Get, so your, she, get your SEO game on, Marianne. Yeah, so she definitely had people talking about her. But I don't, I like when I saw her uh, face, I kind of remember her, but. No, I don't. She didn't make much of an impression on me. Here, let me show you her yeah. really quick. I don't even remember her face. Vaguely, that image. You know what? It's weird. That's like my exact outfit for work tomorrow. A lilac. Um, well, jacket. it's a light pink jacket and a black shirt underneath. Oh, I love that color. Well, guess I'm Marianne after all. <laughs> How old do you think she is? Let me take a look. Um. Oh, she's pretty. Yeah, she's really pretty. So I'm gonna guess fifty-five, six. So guess the seventy. What the. F that bitch is not 70. Yes. And that was the funny thing no because way. before I got into my research, I was like, oh, it is kind of refreshing to have a younger candidate again, compared to old Biden. And then I was like, well, there's not much of an age difference, really. I mean, I'm sorry. She is not 70. I refuse to believe you. She's 70. Isn't that crazy? I mean, you can see the little wrinkles in this picture. No fucking way. Damn, yeah. She looks better than Jane Fonda. No, she looks incredible no offense, for 70. Jane, I love you. Yeah, so I don't know. And she doesn't look like she has a bunch of work done. Because a lot of times you look at people and you're like, you oh, know. you got a shit ton yeah, of work you done. Tell. I mean, she has to because she has no wrinkles and she looks so youthful. But damn, it's crazy. Holy shit. Yeah, so I want to point that out to you. But okay, so after the debate, she only had 4% support. 
And that she ended up dropping out. So okay. she didn't make it far at all. She okay. wasn't even in the first um, primary election. Got it. Okay, so let's fast forward now to March 4th. Okay. She officially announced that she's going to be running again for this upcoming election. And so a lot of people are kind of like... Oh, March 4th as in like last week, March 4th? Yeah. Wow. And there, a lot of people are like um, questioning why she's even trying to run again. So that's because they're like, you didn't barely made it even to the first debate. And now you're going to try again. Okay. I like the audacity or the stick it with itness. <laughs> I also think it's kind of interesting that. Um, I lost my train of thought. Hold on. Why did I think it was interesting? Sorry. Um. <laughs> um, also, wink. Um. What do you call it? CBD, CHE beverages, wink seltzers. If you'd like to sponsor BH Banter, we'd be glad to have those discussions with you because you have been supporting us through these last episodes. <laughs> oh, okay. I know what Thereby, I'm going to say. We sometimes lose track of our thoughts. <laughs> I literally know like diddly shit about her. I think I said this at the top, but I thought she was Republican. Okay, so they asked Biden's press secretary, Karine Jean Perrier, Perrier, how do you say her name? Karine Jean Perrier. I don't know. I don't speak French. We know this. But they asked her, they're like, okay, so is Biden annoyed by the fact that she's going to be running against him? And like Biden hasn't officially announced that he's running again, but we all know he's kind of probably will. And so this is how she responds. And she got a lot of flack for this. Uh, his press secretary. Oh, okay. Which I feel like I don't even, I didn't know who she was until I had her look her up for a story. Because she's no, I don't know, my colleagues disagree. They're like, she's on all the time. I'm like. She is, yeah. And I she's, never see her. She's been on The View multiple times. That's how That's I know. That's so incredible. I can't even. What? <laughs> I just fucking can't with that. What did we do with our P- media literacy PhD aims? What happened? Well, it's wrong. From last night. <laughs> well, what's wrong with going on there and educating voters about stuff? No, it's not. You're right. Okay, regardless, we don't need to argue about her um, ethical well-being. I, and, but she responded, we're just not tracking that, she said before cracking up reporters. And huh. she then replied, if I had a, what it's called, a little globe here, a crystal ball, then I can tell you. A magic eight ball, whatever. <laughs> if I could feel her aura, I just don't have anything to share on that. So she was trying to make a crack at her in a oh, joke. Oh, I like that. And Marianne got very offended. She was like, there's oh, nothing God. funny about starving children. How dare you? And, like, the whole room was laughing. And it's kind of funny because the press secretary usually has, like, no sense of humor. So this was, like, her one attempt to be make people chuckle. Wow. Okay. So the question is, did she deserve that joke? Mm. So she Let's beca- hear it. I don't know. She became famous during her 2020 campaign for suggesting... Uh, that the U.S. government government needs to create a Department of Peace and for outright saying that the Democrat Party should stop focusing on the wonkiness of policy details and try to stop the dark psychic force of collectivized hatred, a.k.a. Trump's campaign. Oh, wow. I don't think... I'm surprised the Democrats didn't latch on to the crazy a little more. Me too. It could have helped them a fuckload. What the fuck has Biden done? Well, and that's... She's really going to be represent... If she makes it into the election at all which i don't know if she will because a lot of people don't take her seriously kind of from everything i'm saying but she would be more representing a lot of the liberals in the far left Mm -hmm. which i feel like a lot of us don't feel like biden are is representing Mm -hmm. because he's so like centrist but marianne has uh, clacked back and she says she does not deserve this crystal woo woo lady reputation she was quoted back a Saying, I've never had a crystal. I've never written about crystals. I've never talked about crystals. I never had a crystal on stage with me. So where did it come from? Well, f- because she's like, it's her reputation for being like kind of out there, outlandish, saying these weird things. And she's like a self-help book guru who's been on Oprah as her spiritual oh, advisor. Okay, okay, okay. So that's like her whole Got reputation. It. And obviously I bet... You walk in with no experience, and and then all these politicians are like, oh, we're supposed to take you seriously. Got it. I get that. So they're kind of like making a fool of her. Got it. And she first found the tension about being spiritual, like a, a woo-woo girl, like charming, but that soon wore off when the media made her like a butt of every single joke. Yeah. And they, they weren't taking anything she was saying seriously. I do feel her. You're right. Oh, my God. Marianne, I think we're friends. I know. That's why I told you. I'm vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> you got our vote. 
Um, no, because that's why I was always so fucking weird with Bewitched Banter at first, because before, you know, we started finding our voices, because I don't want to be judged just because of my belief systems. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's fuck it. I let you do it on the regs now. So here we are. But I feel like I can understand why people are afraid to say those things out loud. Because some peeps be judging. A lot know. of people be judging. Yeah. So. I mean, sometimes I'm judging, so. I mean, sometimes. <laughs> That's the whole shtick, man. <laughs> okay. The media and several other Washington leaders have made it so her name makes people think of, like, they associate her with her being, like, anti-science, anti-medicine, oh dangerous, crazy, and a grifter. So, as of now, she, if Biden does run, which I think he will, she would be the only opponent of Biden for the Democratic Party. Okay. But this is where I think it could be a different story because Biden only has a 37% approval rating. Yeah, I mean. And it keeps declining as, like, that's what they were saying recently. It keeps declining. So, I was like, well, maybe she might stand a chance because maybe people yeah, feel like might. we need a different voice to represent the Democratic Party, but I might be, or she might again just be another joke where no one. I'm takes sure her they serious. will do that to her. They've already um, pigeoned her whole pigeonholed her in that. You know, everyone plays the fool to wink, wink. Go back to my uh, uh, April Fool's episode, but like, there's always the archetype of the fucking ass of the joke, right? And that's what media has done with her. Sounds like so. Unfortunately, she's probably going to be stuck in that. Um, crystal Kathy mode (laughs) (laughs) well also i wonder sometimes if it's the democrat party fires it fires up the spreads the story of her being crazy so the vote doesn't get split and people because vote for biden yeah absolutely because they were saying that every politician basically has came out and endorsed biden if he does run Mm mm-hmm so then they can't really go back and a political ball game. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Long story short, she's never held any political office positions. Um, she said that she's running to break the status quo, and she thinks she'd be a president that tells it as it is. Oh, well, what do you know? We heard that before. Yeah, we? <laughs> a little background on Mary Ann. She was raised in Houston, Texas. Her dad was an immigration lawyer, and she was raised by a stay-at-home mom. Okay. Her parents were extremely liberal, which made her uh, very energized and active about, like, social justice okay. issues and very educated. Respect. She attended college for two years but dropped out. And then, like, through her 20s, I think she was kind of, like, on that path where you don't know where you want to mm-hmm. go in life. So she was, like, a cocktail waitress, um, an author's assistant, and, like, an office temp. So she kind of, like, jumped from... Yeah. Job to job. Who cares if you got a job, you know? And she had strong connections with the LGBTQ community. Oh, okay. And she actually said her whole career is thanks to the gay community, actually. And the reason she has such strong ties is in New York and L.A., she founded two nonprofits to help support people who have AIDS. And this is where she built these strong connections Mm -hmm. with that community. I really like her. She also started Project Angel Food, which serves food to homeless people who have AIDS in LA. In LA. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so she's done a lot of really great things for the community at large. Absolutely. In 2014, she ran at an independent as an independent in California's 33rd congressional district. She finished in fourth place in the primary. Hmm. So she's really never able to really make any leaps and bounds in the political field. Sure. Okay, so I want to talk about her policies that she's running on for this upcoming election. Okay, okay? Let's, these are what I want to hear if they're that crazy. Let's go for it. They're not that crazy. Uh, we'll get a little bit more later into... Her policies are great. I actually like a lot of them. Okay. Um, I love a lot what she's saying. But then there's questionable things she said in her books we're going to talk uh, about at length. Okay, so she's running on a platform of anti-corporate populism. She has stated that corporate tyranny, tyranny, t- tyranny. She has stated that corporate tyranny, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. She has stated that corporate tyranny will end her being the pre- well end while she is the president. So she's mm. really also won- heard that one before. Yeah, from the other side, haven't we? I mean, these are all very lofty goals. Which yeah. you, that's what you do with your policies. Yeah. One of her big criticisms of Biden was that he didn't push back against the Senate's ruling of raising minimum wage. 
and that he on his watch has allowed child tax credit to expire and it it hasn't been renewed. Mm-hmm. And she really believes some of these big policies that Biden isn't really pushing back on doesn't echo what the Democrat voter wants. And she thinks she could yeah. better represent the Democrats. Okay. This is really sad. This was just announced a few days ago. Biden's administration has continued approving drilling for oil and gas in several di- locations. The biggest one that just went viral is he approved the Willow Pro- Project, that was, which is in Alaska. Okay. And they will be drilling about 600 million barrels of oil. Oh, my Over the next 30 years, the Willow Project could pump between 278 and 287 million metric tons of greenhouse gas pollution into our atmosphere. Like we need any more of that. And that's equivalent to the annual emissions of 74 to 76 new coal-fired power plants, or about a third of all coal plants across the country. What the fuck happened to all the EVs supposedly happening? I can't believe for the life of me that Biden would have let that shit fly. Money talks, unfortunately. Well, we're not going to... Money won't mean anything when the world's burning down. Well, that won't matter to them because they have some free fucking bunker for you know, elites that we or will all just die. So, yeah. Yeah, that's really sad, though. Marianne, at her opening ceremony, uh, when she announced that she was going to be running... She said, the Republican Party, the way it is today, represents a kind of nosedive for our democracy. But I think the corporate wing... Corporate, I'm sorry, but I think the corporist wing, that's a hard word to say. It is a hard word. Of the Democratic Party represents a managed decline. Which yeah. I really resonate with. Yeah. Because I do think the Republican Party has lost their fucking mind. It's like a shit we show. We already know that. They but win. then we have the Democrats where you would hope, we keep uh, electing them on these crazy, well, not crazy, these policies they promise us and they mm-hmm. never deliver. Yeah, Exactly. In her detailed plan, she wants universal health care, paid family and parental leave. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Free child care. Yes, 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 yes. And tuition-free public or vocational higher education. Mm, mm, she mm, wants to ban mm. fracking and speeds up the use of green energies. Wow. I don't know how I feel about free college because I feel like not everyone needs to go get a higher education. I think free, no matter what, higher ed or tech. Like trade, I well, I think my philosophy is that if that we are gonna fund people, they need to get really good grades. Because I worked at a for profit university mm-hmm. where our tax dollars were going towards people failing f- for like five months, and then they finally got kicked out. But think about how many one student does that. And multiply that by how many. Mm-hmm. That's true. I know. Because I don't like. Yeah, it's great. We're gonna help people go to college, but if they're just wasting tax dollars. She wants to create new branches of government. Uh, one, a Department of Technology, uh, Department of Childhood and Youth. And I mentioned this at the top, and she got made fun of a lot for this. A P- Department of Peace. An Academy mm-hmm. of Peace, which I actually think America really cool. needs. We do. So the domestic side of the Department of Peace would work against violence prevention, uh, specifically domestic terrorists, because we know that's the biggest threat at the U.S.'s Oh, guns, Facing at, no big deal. At, the, at this point. Let's just go to Walmart right now, you and me. We actually could in Arizona and go buy a fucking shotgun. Like most states. Mm, Connecticut and Northeast were like very anti-gun, but... Oh, okay. I bet you could still go in and buy a gun there. No problem. Well, not after Sandy Hook, but... Um, I yeah. don't know. I don't know enough to be educated to talk about different... It's still not great, uh, obviously. Yeah. And then the uh, for the Department of Peace, the international side would focus on ending conflict. And it's really modeled after, like, the military. So the academy would be a four-year college and would focus on peace education. And then graduates would have to give back by serving the country for five years. I love that. Like, what they do in military academies. Mm-hmm. In her, and I thought this was really interesting. In her outline proposed policy... I had no idea. She mentions that the U.S. military is now the number one non-state polluter in the world. Is that not mind-blowing? Wait, you're sorry. Repeat that. I don't know if I followed. She mentions, mentions the U.S. military is the number one non-state polluter in the world. Oh, so they cause the most pollution. Well, non-state meaning like you can't, we could say California is number one, but it's not a 
country or state unified. Oh, I see. Okay. Like an organization. But so they're number uh, number one non-state polluter in the world. So wow. you could say maybe like airlines or different. Sure. Yeah. You're following? Okay. Yeah. That's gross. If the military was a nation, they would be ranked as the 25th largest polluter. She And I'm not surprised by any of this because our government does anything for the military. She wants to end loopholes that the government has created that allows the military not to report their emissions. Yep. She wants to make sure that the military is playing by the same rules as any other section of the government when it comes to carbon emissions, which mm. why not? I think we mm-hmm. should all be aware of that kind we of information. Should. She's an advocate of ending the electoral vote. She supports ban on assault weapons. In favor of uh, she's in favor of universal background checks for gun purchases. She wants to start a gun licensing program. She's an advocate. How do we not have that? That shit is blows my fucking mind. Well, how do we not ban a fucking oh, right AR fifteen that could kill for? people and like so many people in a matter of seconds? Yeah, what the hell. She's an advocate for um, women having uh, the right to choose for abortion. Um, she does believe in some limited choice, but I feel like it was very liberal. Mm-hmm. She wants to legalize marijuana nation- nationwide. Yes. And she wants to reverse the 2017 corporate cut tax cut. And she wants to tax the rich and create special taxes for all the one percenters. Yes. And a thing I really love about her is she's demanding that we pay reparations to black Americans and she wants to have at least one trillion uh, distributed uh, to Black Americans who have descendants who were j- slaves in a twenty-year time period, wow. and this would be distributed by a council of Black American leaders. Wow! While Biden, on the other hand, says he still wants to examine how this would work, and he hasn't come to a conclusion yet. If, I think he needs to have like probably more experts weigh in. Sure, that's cool of her. Really progressive. She's in favor of universal preschool, wants to provide free lunch and breakfast for kids across the country. Oh my God, I love this. Wants to make reforms to standardized testing. She's an advocate of free college, which I always do to send. Blah. She wants to eliminate interest on federal student loans, which to me is mind-blowing. There's interest on that to begin with. Yeah. So that's all Wow. her policies. I mean, there's a lot more. Her website, uh, I went on it, and it's very detailed. And there were even, like, a lot of the media were, were saying for her being just announcing that she wants to run, she had a really detailed policy um, outline. The only thing she's lacking on, they said that she, need, she didn't really have any stance on, like, foreign affairs. And probably a lot of it's due to because she has no experience. Sure. Okay, so now we're going to talk wow. about questionable shit she has done. Oh, man, I was really digging her. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'll start with the good and Damn then it. go to the bad. That's not the sandwich model. What is you it? You have to go good, bad, good. Oh, that's what I used to do as a teacher. Yeah, and then when I had nothing. The hamburger. Yeah, and when I had nothing good to say about their kid, when I called the parent, I would say, You're, my compliment for the <laughs> compliment sandwich, then the dis, would be... Your child has so much potential. Oh, damn. Well, what else can you say? I don't you can't know. think of anything nice to I say. I don't know. So if I ever say that to you guys, damn. That's a burn. Ooh, that means you dumb as fuck. <laughs> okay, so this is where she's pissed off a lot of people. Okay. So she's made some really stupid remarks about vaccines. Uh, and this was during the early days of like pandemic. Oh, so boy. obviously a very hot topic. And from her stance on AIDS, cancer, and depression, which probably seems like what the hell. Yeah, if she's aborted an AIDS organization. Yeah. Way back that's, when. That part doesn't make sense to me. In 2020, at one of her stops on her campaign trail, she made <clears throat> arguments against having the vaccine be mandatory. She called it Orwellian and Draconian. <clears throat> if I use those words Draconian. right. Draconian. Draconian. That's what I meant. I didn't know what either of those look meant. Um, you probably do, but I'll read them anyway. No, that's okay. I know of them more vaguely, so go ahead. Okay, Orwellian is an adjective describing a situation, idea, or societal condition that George Orwell identified as being destructive to the welfare of free and open society. Yeah, it's like a dystopia. Yeah, yeah, it's a dystopia. And you, the use of the word dr- draconian 
is to describe laws or rules that are really harsh and repressive. In mm. ancient Athens, Draco was a guy who made some seriously strict rules. Got it. So rules that are too restrictive or just plain unfair are called draco- draconian. Okay. I didn't know any of that. That so, part I didn't know. I know I could use it in context, but I still wouldn't know exactly that definition. So that yeah. actually helps. I learned some big words today. PH motherfucking D now. <laughs> But one thing I did say at the top is that I do appreciate that she is one who does say outwardly say, yes, I said that. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I watched an inter- when I was watching that interview with her and Trevor Noah and him interviewing her at 20, I think it was like, I don't know if it was recent, but anyway. I thought it was awesome that she actually openly admitted. She was like, that was a stupid remark. I shouldn't have said Absolutely. that. Sorry. No one ever says that shit. In her book, A Return to Love, Williamson wrote that, quote, sickness is an illusion and does not exist, and that cancer and AIDS and other oh. physical illnesses are physical manifest- manifest- physical manifestations of a psychic scream. She advised um. her followers that seeing sickness as our own love that needs to be reclaimed is a more positive approach to healing than is seeing the sickness as something hideous that we must get rid of. And this is why she will not even get a primary nomination yeah or invited to any debate that right there that's it nail the coffin in the same book she said that uh people shouldn't take medication and the most appalling of it all because with like i'm sure she had lots of people she was friends with in the like the gay community she suggested that people with aids or cancer, and no, it's not only gay people, obviously, <laughs> can will themselves back to health. But, like, she was working with people who had AIDS, and she saw them suffering. Like, how? what an insult. Right. That seems so, um, what? I don't know. Insensitive. Just and Contradictory. And evil. And evil. She also suggested that negative thinking may have caused it. Okay. Yeah. So, this is not, she will not ever pass the next test. Yeah, so I like her policies, but I don't like anything she's said in her and Then books. she should redact her books, but guess what? She's not going to because she probably has royal TVs, so. Well, and that's another huge conversation, and it's good you bring this up, that is the most scary about this is that she has all these negative beliefs, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to get into a few more, but this is okay. something I was going to talk about, but it's she now has a platform. So here we are, I guess, guilty as sin. We are sitting here talking, talking about, about her. her. Yeah. But also it's like the more people, the media talk about her, the more people are going to look her up and be like, mm-hmm. and then start reading her books. And it's really like almost like a press tour for her. It she is. gets way more fans. But the scary part is that because she's getting more fans, people are going to start reading these books and thinking they're real. Right. And it's like fake news. Yeah. And so that's why it's, Toxics. We, I mean, we've seen it happen with Trump too. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh God, who else is going to jump on this train next? The Brando guy, like I said, from Idiocracy. Oh yeah, <laughs> he was like a monster truck, war WWE wrestler. <laughs> yeah, so she even goes as far to uh, say that clinical depression isn't a real thing. It was like she was being interviewed by Russell Brand. Brand. And- oh yeah, I like him. And me too. He's a genius. He's so smart. Mm-hmm. And I love the way he can like bring someone on the show. He doesn't agree with them, but is able to have a conversation yep. with them. Because I would not be able to do that. She suggested in the same interview that antidepressants don't cure depression, but rather are a large cause of suicide. And went as far as saying Robin Williams and Kate Spade killed themselves because of antidepressants. Oh, no. Yeah, you can't do that. I know. You can't that. go around talking about that. A, with no knowledge of the person, B, their medical history or medicine in general, like, or psychiatry, no, you don't, yeah, well, you, you don't do that. She's walked back these statements and she said that really what she was trying to say, and I think her excuse that didn't come out right, was that she really takes issue with them over prescribing antidepressants. Okay. And she doesn't like Big Pharma, like, because she thinks Big Pharma is like giving them to everyone, like, who may just be sad, not depressed. And they did do that to her point, but you know, it's she has no problem taking publishing checks. What's the difference between that and a pharma check? So yeah, exactly. Okay, so this is breaking news as of today. What is today? I don't even know what the day is. Uh, March sixteenth. This just came out. 
Uh, the, wo- the woman who runs her campaign on love and forgiveness has been allegedly reported as being emotionally abusive to her campaign staff Ooh. in the last election when she tried to run. Yikes. Twelve staffers have been interviewed by the media and came forward to talk about the emotional abuse they suffered from Mary Ann. It was reported she threw her phone at one of her staff members, like a little toddler. It sounds like she's having a tantrum to me. Wow. She would yell at them so loudly in a fit of rage that they counted over four times that they were at a hotel and staff had to knock on the door and ask if everything was okay. Holy shit. She was so upset one time on a campaign trail that she beat a car door until her hands were swollen. Damn, she sounded like kind of crazy badass uh, a little there. But yeah. like crazy? kind of badass that's kind of like uh, the whole i'm gonna beat this car up (laughs) she allegedly would scream i'm saying allegedly allegedly because we don't know if it's true or not Mm -hmm. would scream at staff members until they would cry god when uh so this all came out in politico and she's already has responded Mm -hmm. and when she said that was this the breaking news today yeah i think so because it's all in the news feed yeah okay cool she stated that she's never thrown a phone at anyone. She did beat up a car, but that is okay because it's not a person. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh she's never going to win. No, she's not going to get a nomination at all. She did raise her voice once at a hotel, and someone did indeed come and check if they are okay. But she believes that happens in political com- campaigns, and it's kind of human nature to get worked up in this kind of field. In her year-long candidacy, Williamson burned through two campaign managers, multiple state directors, field organizers, and volunteers. So she's a diva. Some were let go, but others, a lot of them, quits the toxic culture. Campaigners have said that her views on the pharmaceutical industry stopped her from taking medicine that would help her with her rage. Ironic. Yeah, very ironic. Okay, so a lot of the campaigners were people who read, like, some of her books right and they like said that the whole reason they wanted to work on her campaign was like because they helped she helped them get through these traumatic events in their lives like if you're like going through loss of a loved one or a divorce like the, her book self-help books really helped them get through it so mm. a lot of them were i mean it's probably really heartbreaking to have this person you idolized and thought they were teaching you the ways in life mm-hmm. and then you think you're gonna do a good cause because i don't think a lot of these people get paid or if they get paid it's probably not much right and a lot of them reported they walked away feeling emotionally abused and one campaigner even said this is why you don't meet your heroes oh that oh that's like the worst dig so she replied to politicos i can be a bitch at the office sometimes i don't think anybody's happy about that she said (laughs) can say that and be that yeah but i think anybody reading that can measure that against what is normal in politics i'm not running for sainthood here she continued i'm running for president if Mm. i've been a tough tough boss lady if i have some lessons to learn which obviously maybe i do then i hope that i will learn them Mm, yeah so that article just came out at this point biden um has a 73 point lead over Mary Ann, if elected, she would be the first woman president, of course, and the first Jewish president. Mm. But I almost wonder, okay, so this is me being all conspiracy theory. Wow. I'm not usually, but do you think maybe the Democrats, because she had this whole thing that she thinks the Democrats are out to get her. Not the Republicans, it's the Democrats, because the Democrats stand to lose yeah, they, Biden being in the position. Sense. And she, part of it, if the Politico, I think she was kind of suggesting maybe it was a smear campaign and that these campaigners were actually using as a political power play so they could move up in the chain in Washington. That makes sense. And rat her out. And then all of a sudden they're looked at like, because you could see how one of them was like, oh, you're doing me a favor. Tip for chat bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, you go and say this because you work for her. Let me get you at this like really cushy job cushy job or this job you've been working for for 10 years mm-hmm. you might not even ever be promised yeah so that's something she said and it i mean that's kind of how the media has been treating her so that's just the only little conspiracy i but, i don't know not not buy it like could very well could be an option yeah or so, something that's happening 
I think everyone, if you're not sure, just have an open mind and try to research and see what you decide on her. So I'm mm-hmm. interested to know. What do you think about her from the limited I information? I like her as a whole. My thing is the context of the books. And again, I'm not going to be that person of cancel culture that like what you said 30 years ago, blah, blah, blah. I just, the books are a little contradictory, if especially around the lgbtq community so i I don't know i'm a little torn because it like we said you can say really stupid would you want to be held to your like stupidest moment your whole life no but i guess how long ago were those books written i mean she was on oprah so oprah hasn't been on air for like what 15 years Mm -hmm. or more i think she was on it's been a while yeah it's been a while since all of that and like i don't know part of me feels like a few things i I don't think she's my dream candidate, but is she better than Biden? I kind of feel like she might be. Huh. I don't know. Do you think Biden's better? No. I think none, no one's good. <laughs> I don't, don't. Well, we're talking about lesser evils, but I feel like it's time to get someone in there who would do something a little different. But maybe... I, I'm i not opposed to it. I, I, yeah, I don't I know. I guess if it came down to her being on the ballot or Joe Biden, who would you vote for? Knowing her age, I now I'm like, oh, shit. But... Um, no, I would vote for her. Yeah. She's an attractive A, which which is so bad. We always go back to that. But, like, attractiveness actually matters. Um, she's attractive. She has some of the beliefs I obviously hold. Um, with, But that's, you know what, though? That's a whole other topic. The problem with New Agey stuff is exactly this, where they get corrupt and then either it becomes cults or they're abusers or they just are worry about making money, 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 money. Yeah, I'm a little torn because I don't also know so. if it's just a play to get more book sales. That's what I'm saying, yeah. And she could be really corrupt because, I mean, those things she said were fucked up, let's be real. Yeah. But also, I really like her policies, but it's okay, It's easy to make a beautiful list of policies that will right. never pass. Absolutely. And I feel like maybe Joe Biden actually has experience, so maybe, I don't know, I need to learn more about her, I guess. I Yeah, I'm not opposed, but I don't think, based on what you read, knowing how political people can easily twist that shit she's fucked oh yeah i don't think she'll get very far at all i don't think anyone's taking her seriously but no. i thought it was interesting that was really great great yeah, time interesting timely i'm glad i had i had not heard of her before me either until the view <laughs> <laughs> this whole episode we're on the you're on the view yeah the view light we didn't fight though i like when you like you have to fight politically oh my God. we'll have to bring someone else with a different view on soon um yeah we do because i i'm torn as well frankly yeah so let us know what you think message us Did, would you vote for her or not or do, yeah. you, do you think he's better than she's better than biden it'd just be kind of interesting yeah, to know let us know okay awesome. on that note peace be witches peace Thanks for listening. Check us out on Instagram or bewitchbanter.com. Suggestions for the show? Email us at bewitchbanter at gmail.com. Credits? Music Phantom Fun by Jonathan Boyle from premiumbeat.com. Podcasts edited and produced by Krista Hins and Amy Holt. As always, if you enjoyed, please rate, review, and subscribe.